You know what it is, VIP Saturdays, man. I got a homie, man. He's from Jersey, man. But, you know, he grew up in Queens, too, man. And this is our first time meeting Crazy. ever. And we have, like, neutral friends and everything and close them. cousins and shit mm-hmm. and all that. We got the homie Joe Buttons in the building. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on, man? What's going on? Good, good, good to finally meet you. Yes, man. Heard, heard, heard your name. Heard many things about you. Yeah. Like extended family. Yeah, extended family, man. I see you in the strip club, and I'm, I'm not the type of dude to just walk up on somebody in the strip club like, yo, I know you know me and extended family. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I feel <laughs> the strip club is always a bad place for that. Especially I, when I see Joe, he always had, he's, he's always comfortable. It'd be a hundred thugs in there. And he's never focused on nobody but the, the waitresses, I mean the bartenders and the dancers. Yeah, that's it. And he and it's not like he's a rapper that's a that comes in like, yo, you wanna play my shit? Joe never goes to the DJ booth. Never. <laughs> he yeah. has his hookah. Yeah, I'm to myself, man. I'm not all that, all that extra shit. I'm not there, I'm not there for nothing shenanigans. Maybe it's cause I'm I'm a little older. So, I mean, let them niggas do what they do. I'm not beating the DJ down. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm just here to relax, enjoy myself. So, man, what's going on, man? This is the album, No Love Lost, the series, right? The series. This is the the final installment in that. This is All Love Lost. Okay, um, All Love Lost. And, and yeah, it just came out yesterday. I'm real excited about it. Uh, fans really seem to be fucking with it. Seems like it's getting a real good reception out there. So I'm, I'm excited, man. It's probably one of my best pieces of work, um, which says a lot for me because I've been rapping so long. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Now, how long you been rapping? Because I, I I've heard stories about when 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 it, when somebody when I was speaking to Web, and this is way back about you was in the basement and farmers and they was like, yo, it's this new kid. His name is Joe and he's crazy. And this was around like 2003 or 2002. What, what, yeah, what? we was in that basement in 0102. Wow. Yeah, well, we we just went to Sam Ash and bought some studio equipment. Mm-hmm. And everything, everything went out the basement. You know, I hadn't even made a song. That was my first time making a, an actual song. Back yeah, then. the so, Cutmaster C days. Yeah, yeah, we were just tearing the mixtapes up. Now, now I, I, I look at the, the mixtapes now because I'm, I'm I'm a mixtape DJ, and I feel like you know you've been an artist that always been ahead. Like I'm, I'm gonna go to the internet and I'm gonna do this now. You know, people say the mixtapes is dead, but you know you've always been on the mixtapes. Like your whole career, I've, you always gave love to mixtapes, and I feel like when you was at that point with Def Jam, and they was a show on the love, you went to the mixtapes to the mood music. Yeah, right back, right, right back to what I know. And that was what that was what on point. And then one of my favorite joints to this day that I play, and I and I gotta say I had a, I got emotion on this. If I die tonight, mm, that's one of my favorite joints. <laughs> now, yeah. now that one, you know, what I'm saying it's crazy. Like I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I play it to this day. I, I work out with it, and this is 2015. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite records of mine as well. It was just a lot of joints like that around that time. That was what Moon Music Two. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I might have to go play that now. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta go play that now. You know what I'm saying? When he said play, you know what I mean? Because if you, I, I feel far as rappers when they can capture the story and you can capture the listener and you feel like you're you're, you're the person yeah. where he's like yo if I die you can smack the spades on the table just say I did what I did you know that was crazy can we get into that record yeah hell yeah we can get into that record now understand you know we, we, we probably got like right 15 million people that listen to us you know what I'm saying uh, maybe like 28 million mm-hmm. worldwide internationally mm-hmm. Can you introduce this record and uh, so a couple of youngsters that don't know what's going on? Yeah, a lot of youngsters out there. So, so, <laughs> what, so what we're going to do is we're going to play this joint. This is off a project called Mood Music 2 that came out in 2005, 2006. Yes. And this is called If I Die Tomorrow. This is over the Tony, Tony, Tony. Yes. Tony, Tony, Tone sample. Uh, y'all youngest probably don't know about that either. That was, uh, damn, what was that? What was that? What was that? Um, anniversary, anniversary, yeah. Tony, Tony, Tone, <laughs> anniversary. Uh, this was a cult classic for a long time, so we're gonna play it right here. Joe Budden, Superstar J, if I die tomorrow. Let's get it. Like, is it one time that you was like, I am not replying or going at this rapper at all? I'm not going to even talk. Well, that Millie Rock. I mean, that, that that shit is just the most recent. I was I was having an exchange with a friend of mine on, or an associate of mine on Twitter. And, you know, we play a certain way with each other. Like, yeah. you know, I, a hoe is a term of endearment 
in this little circle. Explain so, to him, Joe. So I called this girl. She's like, yeah, I just want a Millie Rock to everything. And I was like, you ho. But she could have said, I, I want to eat some cereal. She could have said anything, and I yeah. would have said ho. It didn't have nothing to do with uh, the Millie Rock. Kid. Yeah, I didn't understand that. And here he come the next day or some shit up with a whole Instagram post saying, oh, niggas is hating. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get it. I won't even dignify it. But I guess he's young. He's a young kid in the game. Mm-hmm. I get it. Rappers, rappers at some point, because I'm not sensitive at all. Yes, like, I'm probably fact. insensitive. It's it's tough for me to, to uh, empathize with hypersensitive rappers. Uh-huh. And a lot of rappers, unfortunately, are hypersensitive. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just the nature of the game, I guess. Now, can we get into this track? Now, I told you when I when I seen you in the lobby, the the record, uh, uh, Love, I'm Good. Love, I'm Good. Now, I've been rocking it on, shout out to Los, but I've been rocking it with the motherfucking album release and you talking in the back like, yo, shut up, shut up, this one verse right here. <laughs> <laughs> First, I thought it was a part of the record. I'm like, man, this shit got to be off of, no, this is a good ass recording. I, we played that on, because I, I, I did a listening session on my podcast. I'll name this podcast later every Wednesday at Joe Budden. Follow me. Um, but yeah, I, I played, I did a listening session on my podcast and, and I had to let that whole record run. Had to. Yeah, and it was like, it was, it just stunned the whole internet and I felt, when I listened to this record, it was like this shit is crazy, and it's three different. You, you, you. I, I say with Joe, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a six or seven minute record from Joe. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. He doesn't care about bars. Yeah, no, and, we got rap. Rapper's supposed to rap. And, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story. Stack told me he was like, "Yo, when you go go in the go in the booth with Joe, he's gonna really try to get drag you." That's you, geez. This is what he does. That's what. That's how I try to do it. I, he's he's right. gonna try. You know how Stack was. Stack is Stack is one hundred percent right. God bless his soul. But yeah, he knew what it was every time I was I was in the booth. And it was like when you did the fab, the you know the all the remixes when you know when when Skane's talking that music shit. It was like Joe would go like left, and it was like damn. I think he's at thirty two bars right now. Yeah, I didn't understand. I, I mean that whole fucking. Keep it to 16, keep it to 12. Nah. I be having all types of fights with my Slaughterhouse brothers because it's four of us. Uh-huh. So already the song is longer than it should be if everybody gets a verse. So I'm like, dog, everybody don't need a verse on this song, number mm-hmm. one. Number two, I don't want to rap a 16 or a 12. Like, I want to rap. Yeah. <laughs> so we have those arguments all day in the studio. So this song right here, you now you're talking about, like, the metaphors on this. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> the first verse... And it's like you know, um, you ran, you ran away with Young Thug in Future. <laughs> you, yeah. you did the whole synopsis of of of, of Common, mm-hmm. and and then the shit was that got me crazy is when you said, "Where the fuck is Eric B at?" <laughs> yeah, valid man. Can you break down that verse just a little bit? A little bit. I mean that verse again, what? again, like a common a common theme throughout the album is just talking about hip hop and, and where it is today and, uh-huh. and what it's meant to me and in that verse you know we start uh, again like common on I used to love her we, we start we're talking about hip hop metaphorically and we start in one place and we go to where we are today which you know like when common when he did it he said um uh, damn what is that I don't have the words right in front of, uh, I got a f- brain freeze but he was talking about um, hip hop going to the West Coast, uh-huh. and now they're not even fucking with us over here because that's where it's at. And now fucking uh, um, X Clan and like they were yeah. fucking with everybody but us. So I kind of felt like I had to speak for the lyricists and the people that really uh, put an impact on their words with this because here we are yet again, almost thirty years. Uh, almost 34 years away from being fucking 30 years, five years away from being 30 years from when that song was released. I used to love her. And we're right back in that same, that's crazy the amount of time that passed since then. Yeah, I used to love her was 91, 92. Yeah, shit, you've been in the game 13 years. <laughs> you the OG flying, now. I'm, I'm telling you, I just said that 30 years. I'm like, shit, that's <laughs> a long fucking time ago. But yeah, 25 years ago. So here we are right back where you know somebody just had to question where we are and how we got here and that's what we did in that verse uh kind of similar to a song i did called who killed hip-hop which is just 15 minutes of 
documentation of how we got from point A to point B. Yeah. Can we get into this record? This is oh, one yeah, of my one favorite of my, records. One of my favorite records, probably my favorite record on this album. Um, this is Love I'm Good, produced by A-Rab Music. A-Rab, what up? Album All Love Lost in stores right now. Go pick it up. Joe Button, Love I'm Good. Let's do it. Let's get it. You know what it is, VIP Saturday, Superstar J, and got my motherfucking cousin from Farmers, man, Hillburn. Yeah. And I, Joe was fighting yes. on Hillburn, man. They just told me Joe was fighting, <laughs> yeah. really, with these little kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe no Buttons, way. man, the Joe Buttons hour, man. So what's going on, man? So we got the motherfucking album out. I finally got my copy. Yes. <laughs> and it's in my computer. Now, I want to ask you, is it, what, what is this, a myth? Is, is, is Halloween, and, in, and, and I didn't see it on the net. You know, I'm just seeing it now. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that occurred, but we went a long time without a leak, which is uh, kind of unheard of when you have physical copies of your album. So I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll just say I'm, I'm blessed that it didn't leak. I mean, it could have been uh, the worst case scenario, which is your album done leaked about a month ahead of time. Yeah, so, crazy. That yeah. I know that would piss you off. Oh no, that would be real bad. That would be real bad. <laughs> hey, yo, I heard the record like 50 a month, times. A month ahead of time, release date? No. Then you have to give a motherfucking DVD or something like yeah, yo, yeah, <laughs> some 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 incentive. <laughs> try to run, run back, make a couple new songs. Yeah, nah. Now and also like, I, and I I feel like you and Banks are kind of similar. You you, you you know you do the radio thing, but you really don't do a lot of radio interviews. So, you know, I had to beg. I'm like, yo, I need Joe up here, man. Now, put VIP Saturdays. We got a good time, 8 to 12, and we need you up here. Now, on this album, is is this going to be um, the last installment with this? I know it's the last installment. Are you going to another installment of something? You know, to be honest, I was so engulfed in, in cre the creation of this project, mm -hmm. I, I haven't even thought about it. You haven't? No, I have no idea what I'll do after this creatively. So I have to see. I have to go in the studio and, and see what, what comes out. Uh-huh. And but it's it, a matrix with you because, you know, sometimes people be like, yo, I can't really do a, another mood music. You do series of, of albums. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, do, I do series. I don't know, because, because it's never the thought is never complete uh -huh. with, with just one. Like, my, my brain is, is an ongoing, ongoing place up there. So, yeah, we always, we always have more to say. So, I, I mean, on the cover of this album, it says final installment, but that's subject to change. <laughs> subject you to know change. what? I'm doing another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the more, love more, goes on. More love lost. <laughs> more love lost. Now, let, we're, we're talking about, because I'm a reality TV guy. And I, I, last Sunday, I seen you on, on Couples Therapy, man. Yeah. Now, now, why did you choose to do couples therapy when I could see a for the love of Joe? <laughs> <laughs> why? We didn't see no for. We got a. We got a. Uh, we got game doing a for the love of game or whatever his uh, show is called. We ain't gonna see a for the love of Joe. Why not, man? I can see Joe Buttons picking four, fifteen different chicks no. and making them do. Yo, let, let me tell you something. From two thousand three, and a, a lot of motherfuckers owe you money because we owe you money on fucking bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> this is you have created you show love to all the girls that you deal with and they want I don't know if they don't want to give props but this is from um, Gloria you know what I'm saying uh, from damn near Good fucking uh, we could go way back yeah. we went way back Gloria's way back <laughs> yeah Gloria was great nah man I, I can't I, I wouldn't do I wouldn't do it for the for the love of Joe because that's a narrative I want to escape like I don't my, if the my, check is right it would have to be really right. It would have to be really right, and then I would do it. It might be really right. They pay handsomely in reality TV. They do. Yeah. I, you well, know, they, pay, I, they paid me handsomely. I don't know what they've paid some other people. But I feel like you have a personality, and it wouldn't be a boring show. I don't think you would be just trolleying around oh, no, with chicks yeah, the, no, no. On, the, on, the, on the cruise yacht and all this. <laughs> oh, no. It, would be, it wouldn't be boring. It wouldn't lack for entertainment uh, value at all. <laughs> no, we would have a good time. That's for sure. And I feel like a lot of girls would be fighting hard on on, on, on your show, because I think you have that you have that personality. I feel like Joe would probably have a like a a survey where you got to go to a hookah lounge and you got to find the right hookah lounge that I like. <laughs> one thing, one thing's for sure, it wouldn't be very many unattractive women on that on that show. Yes, they. It would be nice to look at. Now I, I feel like sometimes. Does VH1 pick these girls? Because I shout out to Game, but a couple of them was not that attractive. That's what I said. Do they said. balance it out or? Oh. I don't know how they went about 
doing that. I haven't spoken to Game about it, but <laughs> I said the same thing you did though. A couple of them girls, I couldn't see him doing anything with. And then, and now, would you give it? Would you have like a, a contest? Like, no, she's not gonna be there. Or what would you handpick you? these girls? No, I would handpick myself. Now maybe they said, "Well, no, Joe, well, we we need to handpick them because we just asked all of them about you." Oh, then it wouldn't happen. <laughs> I, I, I beef I beef now sometimes with uh, video directors. But I always want to pick my own. Uh-huh. Girls. I always, I never, anytime I've ever dealt with uh, casting, uh, casting and you casting girls, I always hate it. Always. Right. Now I got another synopsis. Maybe they did a reality show where you was the fucking counselor to somebody. Would that work? I'm, I'm with that too. I'm with that too. <laughs> I got a bunch of my friends call me Yoda and, and I, I give advice crazy to see the craziest people get the best advice so i mean i give advice to plenty of people so i'm, I'm down <laughs> with that too whatever whatever works now what's up with the janice thing man they they they, they i see vh1 is really trying to highlight you with this old woman man <laughs> I, I, it's funny i don't maybe it was the edit or something but people are thinking that i was romantically involved with with janice dickinson and <laughs> oh that my just, god that would never be the case um her and I didn't really we didn't really mesh very well in that house together. So I was very eager to pardon me, I was very eager to get away from her <laughs> in that house. And she's nuts. So I mean you can see it you can see it every week Wednesday that she's a little <laughs> It seems like she likes you and she just wants to get under your skin. No. Uh, she was running it seemed like you was like, yo, and, and I don't know. It, it made it look like you like they 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 showed it like you try to hit her or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's it. They did show it like that. But I mean, they gotta edit it. They gotta edit it a certain way, and they put the little background music. And you know, you gotta get your ratings. I, I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I want to ask you. Jersey's on top right now. It's been you Fetty. for 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 a minute. My guy Fetty. You know what I'm saying? And Patterson and everybody. Now, since you're, would you sign an artist like Fetty? What's your standards of if, if Joe Buttons, you, since you're OG and a motherfucker came up to you and he was dead nice, would you sign him or would you get? Would you have an artist? I see you have Armani and everything. I don't know if he's signing you, but would you sign an artist like Fetty or or Young Thug uh, rapper type dude? Oh man, on the spot, brother. What, or what do you have to rhyme or remind you of you? And that's why it's difficult. It's difficult for me to say because I'm not really a great judge of that style of music. Mm -hmm. So if somebody came to me, you know, Fetty got a million hits on his CD. Yes. But if he brought it to me years ago, I don't. I don't know if I would have been able to identify that they were hits. Okay. But what about right now? Because you said before that, you know, I like music like this. I'm in a strip club and I. I, I bop to this. You know what I'm saying? I've heard you say that before. I, I do. It's just not the music I create. So what is that the music would you sign? No, a good music is good music. Mm -hmm. Like, Fetty does what Fetty does well. There are some people that make that type of music bad. <laughs> yeah. So, no, good music is good music. It would just have to be good. Okay. That That's it. You still didn't answer my question. Would you sign a guy like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I would. I would. See, he's on the camera right now. Yeah, no, I would. No, count count me in. I, I love what I love what Fetty is doing. Like I respect individuality, mm -hmm. so it's great that it's great that somebody from Jersey is seeing the amount of success that he is. I'm like to watch him where he was last year yeah. this time and where he is this year this time. And I think somebody told me that the uh, somebody told me what his pub deal looked like, and I got sick to my stomach for a minute. I was like, oh. Goodness gracious! But I had to salute. I had to salute. Like, was it a good pub deal or a good, bad? Oh, good. Like, <laughs> he like, like, and I know you do the numbers. He's like, when his single two, three, four, five. Well, he's, got, he's got a bunch of them, but I'm just saying. I re I remember hearing people tell me his story last September. Yeah. And here we are, October, and you know the stars just align for that kid, man. I'm real happy for him. So now, are, are you proud that you know because you put Jersey on the map? Now I feel like these A&Rs are going to be looking for Jersey artists. Well, that's where it gets tricky, because I don't think Fetty sounds like he's from Jersey at all. That's a fact. <laughs> so I don't. I'm unsure. I know when I when I came out with Pump It Up and Fire, I thought that people would run to Jersey and and search for the talent there, and then that would help. And I'm not sure that it did. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what pushes the A and R's to the cities to find the talent. I don't know. Yeah. Um, 
I hope that people go to New Jersey because we got talent in all over all over New Jersey. Yeah, Jersey has a lot of talent. I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of rappers come up. Yeah, that is. Before you go, I, you know, I, I got two more questions now. Being an OG, now you see what's going on with his other member, P. Dice, and, and all this there going back and forth. What, 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 would you pull him to the side like, yo, y'all, y'all, y'all got to get to the money. Like, I feel like it, it was, it was it's, it's bullshit was going on. I Especially agree. When, when, you know, when you brung up people and the same type of shit happened. I agree. <laughs> what would you say to, to them on, on the camera? Like, or being from a jersey and you're OG. This is a dot on a piece of paper. This is very small, very minute, very trivial. And we got bigger fish to fry. And that's a fact. That's why I feel like just being at this time... No, yeah, not now. Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the worst time. It's the worst possible time. And over- Joe Buttons in the eighteen. Come on, man. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Yeah, man, just bad, bad. <laughs> and for what? I mean, looking back at it, you know, me and Ran and, and Hitch, we've had these talks. Like when you look back in retrospect, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. When you look back, it's just like dream man, team. We, man. we were young and stupid, beefing about just like bullshit. I would tell these guys the same thing. Definitely, man. And on one thing before you go, D- does commercial records work for Joe? Because I feel like the Little Wayne records, you try to you try to go that way, and you know it was like, yo, all right, well, y'all gonna show me love because it was a good record. You know what it is? You know it's 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 tough to call with me. Like the Wayne record, uh, she don't put it down. Wayne and Tank, yes, that record worked. It was very successful. Okay. Um, then I did NBA with French and Wiz. And that record worked. It worked to the extent that the label pushed it. It was a great record. Yes. Forms great. All of that, right? So people wanted to hear that. Um, my core fan base didn't want to hear any of that shit. Yeah, that's what that's, they that's, hated it. <laughs> they never want to see me ever make a radio record, a record that could play in a, a club, a strip, or strip club. club, or any. Of that. They want to hear a certain type of music, and I do understand that, but. Sometimes you gotta go out. That's not that's not the only side of me. Like I'm in the streets, I'm out, I'm strip clubs, women, I love yeah. all of that shit. So you gotta you gotta embrace that shit. But I I don't I don't consider myself a radio act per se. Like that's a every fact. time like I'm an album artist. Every time I come out, I'm not I'm not relying on a hit single, I'm not relying on a huge uh huge radio budget, I'm not relying on a bunch of features, like I'm coming to rap. That's, That's always what it boils down to with me. So maybe next project, we'll throw another one out there, get the strip clubs rocking a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I need a fucking Joe Button strip club record, man. I got, I got a nice one in the tuck, too. I do. Well, well, I need exclusive, man. We, we, we With cousins, man, I need exclusive for that, man. Because, you know, I hit you. I hit you. Because I, I, I feel like, you know, before you go, like, you can rap. And, you you know, it's a lot of dudes that can rap but can't make songs. You can rap and make songs. Yeah. So yeah, why man. the fuck is all Joe Buttons fans don't want him to make a record where yeah, I see my nigga myself. Joe Buttons and they slapping the ass and he's throwing a hookah like? Because I know sometimes you feel like, man, I know I can just fucking easy shit right here. This is what y'all need. It's the easiest thing in the world, it really is. It is. <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting space, man. But we can do. We're gonna premiere it right here on, on the VIP on Saturday, side. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Because this is family right here, man. We're gonna get to that. That's what it is, man. Yo, man, thanks for coming out. Thanks I told him it's 13 years on this motherfucking interview. I had a whole bunch of questions. This and was, I was a great studying. interview. <laughs> this, this was, like, great. Man. You could tell it was 13 years. Yeah, man. That's what I should have discussed. We went back down memory lane. Yeah, we talked about a lot of shit. Yeah, because I had, I, had, I had my shit, but, you know, in the phone, I was like, yo, man, fuck these questions. I'm just going to freestyle yeah. this shit. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's the best way to do it, man. Joe Buttons. Can you tell them the album once again, man? All Love Lost in stores right now. Make sure you go out there and pick it up. Amazing, amazing body of work. Take my words.